Have you been using Streamlit Library in creating some web applications? Perhaps you have already successfully deployed the web application locally, but do you want to deploy it onto the internet so that other people could have access to your awesome web application? If you answered yes, then you want to watch this video to the end because I'm going to show you how you could deploy the Streamlit web application onto the internet using Heroku. So without further ado, we're starting right now. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is head over to the GitHub of the Data Professor and you want to go to the repository called Penguin's Heroku. So all of the files that we will be using to deploy onto Heroku will be provided in this repository. So the web application that we are going to deploy is the Penguin's classification web app that we have previously created in the third part of this Streamlit tutorial. Okay, so let's have a look at this repository. So we're going to see that it comprises of this initiating readme. So this will provide us with the details that we see on the GitHub. And other than that, we have copied the following four files from the GitHub of the Penguin's web application. Penguin's app.py, Penguin's clean.csv, Penguin's clf.pkl, penguins example.csv. So these four files were copied directly from the repository that I'm going to show you right now. So we're going to code, we're going to streamlit, and it was from part three. So we copied everything except for the modelbuilding.py because the modelbuilding.py will produce the PKL and that's what we need, which is the saved model that we have created. Let's head back. All right, and aside from the four files, which is directly related to the Streamlit web application, we're also going to create three additional files called the proc file requirements.txt setup.sh. So let's have a look at the proc file. So the proc file will essentially run the setup.sh file and run the Streamlit web application. The requirements.txt will tell Heroku to install the following Python library and the corresponding version. And so I'm going to show you in just a moment how I came up with this precise version number. And we also created this setup.sh. So this will handle issues regarding the server side in terms of the port number and it will add it to the configuration. Okay, so let's have a look at the requirements.txt. So what did I do? Let us open up the command prompt. So I typed in CMD in the search and I'm going to activate my conda environment. So if you have a conda environment, you want to activate that using the name of your conda environment. And so the conda environment on my computer is called DP. So I'm going to activate that. So let me type conda list and we're going to see the exact version number that we have installed on our computer. So let's see, what do we have? We have streamlit. So we have right here, streamlit version. Oh, okay. So I've been using different computer. So actually on this computer that I'm using to record this YouTube video, I'm using a Lenovo desktop, which is running on a windows. And the number that you see here is from my MacBook pro. So they're using slightly different number here. And so pandas on this windows notebook is 1.0.1. .1, whereas I have the older version on my MacBook pro and numpy 1.18.1. NumPy 1.18.1, Scikit-Learn 0.22.1. Let's have a look. Scikit-Learn 0.22.1. Okay, so the important thing is if you have already tested that your web application works on your current computer and you want to copy the exact version number into your requirements.txt. So at the time of testing, I used my MacBook Pro. And so these were the version numbers from the MacBook Pro. And so this worked perfectly, so nothing wrong with this. So what you could do in this requirements.txt file is to include all of the library that you are using in your code. So why did I include these four library? Let's have a look at the code. It's because in the penguins app.py, we've been using the streamlit library, the pandas library, numpy, and because pickle is built in, we don't need to include that. And also the scikit-learn. So there's a total of four, streamlit, one, pandas, numpy, and scikit-learn, okay? 
and then I included the exact version number and make a note that you need to have two equal sign here okay and so we have a total of seven files and including the readme then we have eight files and as a recall the four files here beginning with the penguins are related to the web application that we have created in streamlit and the three files comprising of proc file requirements.txt setup.sh will tell Heroku what to do what library to install which version to use and what precise command to run in order to run the streamlit web application okay so let's head over to Heroku now So if you haven't yet signed up for Heroku, you want to sign up. And if you have already signed up, you want to log in. Okay, so after logging in, we will see this dashboard. And so these are the web application that I have already created in Heroku. And so if we want to create a new app, what we need to do is click on new and then click on create new app. And then you want to give the name of your app here. So let me try penguins. Okay, that doesn't work. App. How about penguins st, st for streamlit or even just penguin streamlit okay so that works and then once you're satisfied with the name of your app and make sure that it is available otherwise it will give you a error like this in red it's not available and then you just find a name that's available okay penguin streamlit and you could also select the region of the server that is going to host your web application so the options here are united states and europe so we're gonna select the united states and then you want to hit on the create app wait a few moment all right so in the deployment method you want to click on github okay so i have already connected my github account with heroku so if you haven't yet done that then you want to also do that as well and after you have already connected your github account with heroku then you could type in the name of your repository so what was the name of the repository it is called penguins heroku so let's copy that penguins heroku and then click on search click on connect and here you could also enable the option for automatic deploy meaning that whenever there is a change in your web application files on the github it will automatically deploy your web application onto Heroku so I'm just gonna leave that out and we're just gonna proceed with the manual deploy so don't do anything here so the default is master and then you want to click on the deploy branch Okay, scroll down and then you want to have a look at this feed here so it's going to provide you with the output in real time so what it is currently doing is installing the necessary python library so the good thing about heroku is that you don't have to worry about the server you don't have to maintain the server so the only thing that you need to care about is the application itself so the thing is you just upload your application onto github and then you connect that with heroku and then you could just simply deploy that web application so here it is also installing dependencies as well so this might take a couple of minutes so in the meantime you might want to grab a cup of coffee and sit back relax and enjoy okay so it is finished so it's going to be deployed at penguins-streamlit.herokuapp.com wait a couple of seconds and it's going to create the link at the bottom yeah right here so whenever it is finished you will see the link at the bottom it will say your app was successfully deployed and then you can simply click on the view link here and this will bring you the web all right so it's apparently loading and when the web application is loading for the first time it might take you some time 
Okay, so now the web application is loaded. And so let's play around with the input parameters. And as we can see, the prediction label changes along with the prediction probability. Okay, so congratulations. You have now successfully deployed your Streamlit web application onto Heroku. And if you're finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet done so. Hit on the notification bell in order to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.